So we're now going to hear directly from diaspora organisations from all the participating countries on how they can contribute to the SDGs. We'll see the results of consultation that were organised by the Global Diaspora Confederation during their first global assembly last year. And I'm delighted to introduce Laura de la Fuente, who's going to moderate this session for you. Herself an expat, Laura has been an active contributor to the Mexican Global Network in Ireland since 2015 and is currently president of the Red Global MX chapter in Ireland. The co-founder of the Latin America Trade Council of Ireland, there is no better person placed to lead this dynamic session. So Laura, it's over to you. Thank you, Deborah. Um, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, IOM and Government of Ireland, for this opportunity. Ministers and distinguished guests, you are all very welcome. Kite Mila Folcha, that's 100,000 welcomes in Irish. Um, our topic today is connecting with diasporas as partners for development. This hybrid session will provide an opportunity for delegations from participating countries to hear directly from three diaspora organizations regarding their vision for how they can contribute to achieving the sustainable development goals through the presentation of the results of consultations organized by the Global Diaspora Confederation during their first Global Diaspora Week last year, as well as selected interventions from other diaspora organizations. Our first speaker is Peter Kwok. He is the founding chair of the Global Diaspora Confederation. The umbrella-led civil society organization to connect and empower diaspora organizations at the global level. Peter also chairs the UK Federation of Chinese Professionals, interconnecting Southeast and East Asians in the UK, Young Chinese Professionals UK and Cranfield University's Alumni Association in China. He's a member of the Police Scotland's National Independent Strategy Advisory Group, a member of the advisory group at Scotland China Education Network and Hong Kong Scotland Education Connection. Peter previously supported as honorary chair for the Asian Association of Culture, Commerce and Education in Europe and the Association of Chinese Entrepreneurs in Scotland and as a chair of advisory board for Social Development International based in Cameroon. He was a former board member of Nanjing Overseas Friendship Association Yangshu Province Federation for Returned Overseas Chinese Junior Committee, both in China and Ricefield Chinese Arts and Culture Center in the UK. Peter received the Alumni Award for Excellence in Achievement from Cranfield University and the Freedom of the City of Glasgow. He has nominated for the Charity Chair of the Year in the UK and is a graduate of Imperial College. He's going to talk to us about the needs and aspirations, challenges and opportunities for diaspora organizations collecting during, collected during the last year's Global Diaspora Week. Peter, over to you. Thank you very much, Laura. Can I just double check if the, the presentation is on? So to Director General, Deputy Director General, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to be able to present here today. And um, as Laura said, Global Diaspora Confederation connects and empowers diaspora organizations at the global level. If we go to the next slide. Yep. So what we do, GDZ brings together the efforts and voices of member diaspora organizations to further support their communities. And we've got a very brief history, well, just over almost two years, and celebrating with you in April this year as well. Next slide, please. Our vision, Lotha has already briefly explained, we are umbrella-led and diaspora-led civil society organization to unify, support, develop, and promote diaspora organizations where they can discover and realize their ambitions in order to achieve peace, unity, 
and social and economic advancement role. And when we say dance organizations, there are a, a shorter firm, shorter form to talk is DO, standing for dance organization. Next slide, please. Okay. So GDC is a charitable, non-political and non-governmental organization registered in the Netherlands with NB status. GDC has four principal organs. We've got a council, board, fellows, and also secretariat. We're connecting with 1,500 diaspora organizations in the world. We also developed 70 categories of diaspora organizations, having trustees based in Europe, Asia, South America, and Africa. Next slide, please. Great. So we, GDC, has got a membership structure. At the very top, we've got fellows, GDC 100, GDC 21, and senior fellows and junior fellows. But at the same time, we also have senior members and regular members who are moving up the GDC system so that we can con continue to recognize and empower them through this uh, contribution way. But at the same time, we also recognize a lot of diaspora organizations do not have registration. And uh, although we don't work very closely with them, um, but they are still uh, associates to us. So in order for them to become a member, regular member with GDC, they need to have a diaspora community network, obviously. They also need to have a registration in the country of operation and comply with laws. Next slide, please. So talking about the Global Diaspora Week and Assembly, we had the absolute honor from the Director General who opened our week last year in December. The week with the purpose of uh, listening and consulting the diaspora organizations across the world, their work towards sustainable development goals, as well as the GCM Objective 19. The week was spread over six days, continental days, starting with Asia, Africa, Europe, North Central America, and the Caribbean, South America, and Oceania. Next slide, please. The Global Diaspora Week was closed with the honor from Ms. Daniels, also a Deputy Director General of IOM, who came to meet our, us, the diaspora organizations. So the purpose of the assembly, which is on the very final day, and also on the International Migrants Day, is to aim to recognize diaspora organizations' achievements across the world, promote them, empower them, and also demonstrate that even local uh, even local diaspora voices can be heard directly by those at the very top. And of course, summarize the global diaspora impact that we have holistically done together. Next slide, please. We've got 160 diaspora organizations in the very first year joined us at the Global Diaspora Week. Next slide. And later, I will be talking about these five groups. So basically, these five groups uh, of thematic groups of SDGs happened on every continental day. They are all observed by IOM offices in all continents, including HQ. Next slide. Okay. So to begin with, the first thematic group one, we've got SDG one, two, three, and six. So no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, and clean water and sanitation. Deals from deals basically the diaspora organizations, deals from Asia believe it is important to map skills and establish relationship with stakeholders on clean water and sanitation. Many of them have skills. But local connections is sometimes missing. DOs in Europe mentioned they have ongoing links with their home countries, not only 
to provide clean water and sanitation for all to educate locals on the importance of water management. This sort of education has helped local communities to embed healthy sanitation practices in their day-to-day -day living. In addition to that, there were DOS projects in Europe to provide a dam to address low water level and supply water to areas that depend on agriculture for survival. Not only projects are well funded, and uh, hence DOs in South America were engaged in crowdfunding activities to raise funds to build rainwater containers and reservoirs in areas of Venezuela where there is poor water supply. For example, solar panel plants for water treatment were used in Venezuela that has seen successes. And they now even plan to export from the country. Deals in South America also mentioned they have been tapping into government projects for clean water to rural uh, communities in Chile. In terms of zero hunger and well-being, deals in Europe mentioned they have supported victims of natural disasters to tackle hunger, but limited capacity for deals in Africa meant connecting with stakeholders to collaborate at all levels is key. For example, fundraising to pull together resources. This is also echoed by South American deals with a vision to promote entrepreneurship to reduce poverty. Empowering migrants with the tools to survive, financial support to find jobs, and to help them live and work legally is becoming a common practice for diaspora organizations in many continents. For DOs in North Central America and the Caribbean, they sent finances back to home countries to contribute to projects, but express challenges of adequate resources required for intervention. These limited resources include time, finance, and human resources capacity required. Next slide, please. Okay. So for thematic group two, we're talking about SDG quality education. And uh, of course, we also include partnership for goals number 17 uh, in all our groups. African diaspora organizations mentioned that Africa is encountering ongoing brain drain, where highly skilled personnel migrate to developed countries for better living standards and quality of life. Hence, they need to see education at the global, at the local level, so that talents can feel the need to return to their countries of origin for development. DOs in Europe shared that language, support, uh, language schools have been attended by a sizable population of young descendants of migrants and elderly often enriched their quality of life when they pursue lifelong activities organized by DOs. For DOs in North Central America and the Caribbean, they express the need to have more resources channeled into improving education, citing it as a significant tool for development. DOs in Oceania mentioned that they can leverage the use of technology for education and upskill migrants for employment where educational and language barriers can be bridged for better integration into the country of destination. Next slide, please. Thank you. So next slide, uh, this, sorry, this slide, the matter group three, key highlights, we're talking about SDG 5, 10, 16, and 17, that's gender equality, reduce inequality, peace, justice, and strong institution, of course, partnership. Some Asian diaspora organizations have been offering support to victims of human trafficking, forced labor, and modern slavery through advocacy efforts to cooperation with host government. They also 
emphasized the need for awareness campaigns that migrant worker need proper orientation and necessary support to avoid being victim of hum inhumane treatment. For Europe, diaspora organizations mention that they have been supporting migrants integration into countries of destinations with translated publications to remove the barriers, while other deals provided language support to female diaspora farmers, for example, in parts of Europe. Gender imbalance within organizations is still an issue, especially in leadership positions, observed by deals in North Central America and the Caribbean. They suggest that there should be adequate training for the next generation. Furthermore, there is an increasing number of good practices where DOs promote entrepreneurship as a means to reduce poverty amongst women who are empowered to find jobs and overcome immigration issues and language barriers in host countries, discussed by DOs in South America. For deals in Oceania, a balanced narrative uh, needs to be given to remove the notion that diasporas just take from the host country and show through quantification and qualitative research. For example, references were made to Portugal's move in showing the contribution of diasporas, not only in tax aspects, but also in social security contributions and South Africa's wine industry being majorly contributed to by diasporas. Sadly, the search in hate crimes and a speech, particularly xenophobia, where ethnic minority groups were blamed for the outbreak of coronavirus has severely affected diasporas across the world, felt and alerted by a huge number of diaspora organizations. Next slide, please. Here. So the next slide, uh, so this slide will be uh, thematic group four, looking at SDGs 8, 9, 11, and 17. Eight being decent work and economic growth, nine being uh, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, 11, sustainable cities and commu communities. It is not taken lightly that the countries of destination had opened their doors to diaspora. However, according to deals in Oceania, the mindset needs to be shifted for diaspora to be able to create opportunities and enabling environments for themselves. For example, emphasis was drawn from the UK Prime Minister, acknowledging that he was attended, he was being attended to by migrant workers during COVID-19. With more institutional support, Challenges such as host countries not recognizing academic qualifications and experience obtained from home countries can also be mitigated. It is not uncommon to hear highly qualified migrants had no choice but to take on very low paid jobs in countries of destination because of such issues. DOs in Africa mentioned they have been contributing yeah, they have been contributing uh, to the countries of origins economy, making investments and remittance for business to create employment opportunities. An African deal also mentioned a success story of uh, the Hispanic women who put together funds to set up business, rendering ambulance services. African deals have called for improved and better national government policies that will attract diasporas willing to come back, to give back. They explained that some existing policies were discouraging for diasporas. As for deals in North Central America and the Caribbean, they observed that employment issues are hardly mentioned when grants are given are being given to support projects. Even employment issues contribute to some of the major challenges diasporas face. Deals in South America believe the knowledge gap closing between migrants, 
still need more support. As for Europe, deals think skill scale depends on different countries, and volunteering with deals is a way to close it. Asian diaspora organizations believed that diasporas giving back the wealth of skills to their country of origins have led to employment creation. It is a common practice for Asian diasporas organizations to pursue synergic efforts with stakeholders for progressing infrastructures and innovations, as well as policies on human and social capital development, funding, and real-time solutions to diaspora challenges. However, they have been really affected by COVID-19, especially unskilled migrant workers. Next slide, please. Thank you. So group five, which is the very last group um, we had, we focused on number seven, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So affordable and clean energy, responsible consumption and production, climate change, climate action, life below water, life on land, and of course, 17, partnership. Deals in South America suggested that there is a need to combine the goals of a country and those of the deals towards clean energy solutions. For example, Don Dominican migrants in Chile importing their knowledge of the use of recycled solar panels in Chile. There was consensus that although raising expertise can be done virtually, connectivity could be a barrier to others in other parts of the world. The need for diaspora-driven impact investment was discussed. This required diaspora organizations to become climate change advocates and facilitate information sharing within their communities. This was also supported by DOs in Europe where climate change education was highlighted to tackle the global challenge through diaspora sharing examples from their affected countries of origin. Oceania diaspora organizations also mentioned there have been diaspora contributions as diasporas are often first responders to natural disasters. Their work should be quantified and recognized. Next slide, please. So in short, everyone, including diaspora, are very affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide, please. Over the past year, um, IOM has been developing the global framework for uh, diaspora engagement on humanitarian assistance. And this global framework, we're able to apply it uh, right at this time. It's very challenging and, and set time when we create the Global Diaspora Humanitarian for Forum Hub on Ukraine response. Um, this later on, you will be hearing from our colleagues, Stephen, uh, from the Ukrainian diaspora, Ukrainian World Congress, who will talk more about uh, their efforts. But at the same time, we at the global level also look at how we can provide support for Ukrainian diaspora, also non-Ukrainian diaspora. Yep, love that. Finish Sorry to off. interrupt you, uh, just we're running mm -hmm. out of time. Could you um, skip to perhaps to the uh, conclusions? Wonderful, thank you very much. In thank conclusion, you. which is slide number 20, Yeah, sounds like, thank you very much. So in short, um, here are the recommendations and conclusions. We are moving away from traditional diaspora engagement and start harnessing the use of technology. We are also quantifying and, and recognizing diaspora and diaspora organizations effort, but we need your support. More opportunities, to contribute to policy development and consultations have been a very uh, big thing for the diaspora organization. They feel they, they wish they were part and uh, supporting the global efforts in building diaspora organization community is uh, what GDC is working very closely with IDA, IOM and also all stakeholders in this sector.
fostering more trust and capacity building activities is something that we hope to also work with stakeholders in the future. And final but not least, uh, promoting transparency in responding to and providing more resources for diaspora needs. Um, so thank you very much for all your kind support in the years to come that we look forward to working with you at a global level. And just to close the presentation, um, this year is 70th anniversary for IOM. So wish you a wonderful time and also uh, another successful 70 years ahead. Thank you very much for all the kind support and the privilege of sharing here today. Thank you, Peter. Our next speaker is um, Mirana Rajo Harrison. She's a DEPS Executive Director. She joined the organization in July 2019, holding a double master in economics and development management. She has worked at different stages of the project cycle in various African and South Asian, Southeast Asian countries. Mirana has also worked on the European Commission and World Bank funded projects. Her first experience on the Nexus Migration and Development was in, Sahel, in the Sahel, where she worked with the climate migrants in the W Park buffer zones. Mirana is from Madagascar, where she has worked as an economic advisor with the President's office, within the President's office. She's going to share reflections of their work, challenges, and more importantly, opportunities to support their work going into the future through the Future Agenda document of the Global Diaspora Summit. Mirana, over to you. Thank you, Laura. Excellencies, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to present Africa Europe Diaspora Development Platform, or ADEPT, the platform for Europe based African diaspora organizations. Our mission is to amplify the influence and the impact in Europe and Africa. Our portfolio of services available to all African diaspora organizations based in Europe includes policy and advocacy, capacity building, funding, as well as networking. In addition, we have dialogue tools. The first one is the Diaspora Development Dialogue, a multi-stakeholders roundtable dealing with diaspora concerns. The second tool is the Diaspora Youth Talk, dedicated to youth preoccupations. The first attribute of diaspora organizations is their heterogeneity. This makes it difficult to meet their needs, which can be very diverse and even opposing. However, the, major, the majority of them hold similarities in the small size and lack of permanent staff. They constitute the first category of diaspora organizations. They usually are highly specialized. For fundraising, they count on their members and organize social events. They cannot rely on grants as they do not have the necessary bid writing competencies, nor the access to relevant information. Our main challenge is to professionalize them, have them become more sustainable, notably through investment in human resources and in bid writing capacity. It is a prerequisite for their passing from this first category to the second one. The second category of diaspora organization is the medium one. They have a more or less sustainable business model, permanent staff, and they benefit from capitalism of, of the 10 years of experience. They have the bid writing capacity in-house, but lack time because of their limited human resources. For the growth, they need opportunities to network with peers. This will enable them to learn from each other, as well as to constitute consortia where they may pull their expertise to respond to calls for proposal. In addition to creating networking opportunities, we facilitate the connection with development agencies, especially in the field. Our main challenge is to be able to find funding to support the scaling up of the tested projects. Diaspora based in France and Germany, or from Mali and Senegal, can benefit from dedicated funding. However, a pan-European funding is needed to support the diaspora organizations based in a country with no historical link. Predictability of funding is key for them to formulate a long-term growth 
and pass in the third category. The third category gathers diaspora organizations with several decades of experience. The permanent staff is more than five people. They may have representation offices in Europe and Africa. They have a proven business model and thanks to their recognized expertise, they can partner with international NGOs to carry out projects in Africa. The main expectation from us is the co-organization of events, relaying or teaming up on policy and advocacy, and eventually assistance for their outreach. They may have recourse to adapt small funding for their unplanned activities. These three categories share undertold motivation, efficiency, and agility. The transaction costs are low as they connect directly the transnational to the local. The sustainability of the results is ensured by the partnership with local authorities and civil society guaranteeing a bottom-up approach. They can intervene in fragile areas which foreigners do not have access to anymore. Excellencies, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, diaspora organizations are our trump card to achieve the sustainable development goals as well as the objective two of the global compact on migration. That can be the SDGs accelerator we need to minimize the drivers of migration. Adept commission a research that identified the key drivers for diaspora engagement. engagement. There were capacity building, funding, and enabling environment, both in Europe and Africa. Countries aspiring to model good practices for enabling environment may strive to recognize diaspora organization clearly as development actors, integrate them into the development cooperation programs, include them in consultative mechanisms, Dedicate specific funding adapted to their needs and characteristics, be it at a national level or through a pan European platform, and build partnerships with umbrella organizations supporting them. Those are a few actions listed in the Objective 19 of the Global Compact on Migration, which has been overlooked. The diaspora received today less than 0.1% of aid. Desperate organizations are doing their part. We have to do ours. Create the conditions for diaspora organizations to fully contribute to sustainable development. Excellencies, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. I look forward to co-creating a shared vision in diaspora sector together. Over to you, Laura. Thank you, Mariana. Our third speaker is Mr. Stefan Romani. Sorry about that. Yes. Our third speaker is Mr. Stefan Romani. He currently holds the position of Executive Director of Community Languages Australia. He served terms as a chairperson of the Victorian Multicultural Commission under both governments in Victoria. He has teach he has a teaching qualification and prior to moving into senior government positions and senior management worked in a range of school settings. He has served as a chairman of the Victorian Government Australia Committee. He's first vice president of the Ukrainian World Congress and co-chair of the Australian Federation for Ukrainian Organizations. He holds position of chair of the Ukrainian World, Ukraine World Congress, International Committee for Recognition of Holodomor as Genocide and chair of the Ukrainian World Congress, International Religious Affairs Committee. Currently, he serves as a chairman on a number of committees and organizations with broader Australian and Ukrainian communities. In 2001, he was awarded the Order of Australia Medal for his contribution to education. In 2003, received the Centenary Medal for services to the community. He has received the three levels of orders of recognition and medals from the President of Ukraine for services to Ukraine. He also received the Foreign Affairs of Ukraine Medal for services to international relations. Stefan, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, on behalf of the Ukrainian World Congress, thank you for having the opportunity to be here. 
before I go into my presentation, obviously this is a, a sad time for Ukraine, given that uh, Mr. Putin and uh, his Russian Federation have now committed genocide and acts of um, uh, against humanity, which you've all seen. And uh, the reason for the raising of that is uh, because the Ukrainian World Congress uh, has now played an integral part in supporting Ukraine during this time. The Ukrainian World Congress has uh, been an integral part of developing uh, strategies that can work with governments throughout the world um, and in conjunction with Ukraine. Um, could I have the first slide, please? Um, where the next slide, please. Um, the UWC is a global voice for the Ukrainian people worldwide. We represent about 20 million uh, Ukrainians in the diaspora. Um, we have uh, we're in over 60 countries, and now we're talking about diaspora in action because those 60 countries have been very, very active in supporting Ukraine and taking out the message of Putin's atrocities in Ukraine. Um, we're also recognised in the United Nations Economic and Social Council, and uh, we've, we're participatory members of the international non-government organisation with the Council of Europe. Next slide, please. Um, we have a, a range of um, impactful programmes. Um, we have a global team of volunteers and, and staff, and we have strong networks and partners and supporters. And I think that's the important thing that I've taken out of uh, some of the presentations by their excellencies and ministers, um, and, and also Mr. Kwok, in terms of uh, what the diaspora should be doing. Next slide, please. Um, our, our programs are, are, are very, um, and we have uh, active councils, and whilst you can't see them on there, uh, they're the different councils that we have that work throughout the uh, international community uh, and the diaspora working very, very close with Ukraine. Um, and we have also have very prominent leaders who work with us. Uh, next slide, please. Um, again, in terms of the Ukrainian World Congress and the diaspora working um, in or in action, um, encountering Russian aggression. Um, we have an international coalition of support for Ukraine um, in our countries, wherever we are. Uh, we have worked very, very hard to make sure that uh, Ukraine gets the support of those governments. Um, we have uh, peace process, processes. Uh, we work towards the Crimea and the deoccupation of uh, the uh, Crimea platform. So ultimately, we're active participants. We collaborate with many, many other ethnic communities, again, taking our experiences and their experiences. Um, we're protecting Ukrainian communities in Russia. Um, the, Putin and his uh, government has, have black banned in the Ukrainian World Congress and the Ukrainian communities in Russia, and we have taken those up into the international courts. And we are a global voice in terms of NATO uh, membership and advocacy. Um, we worked hard to stop Nord Stream 2, uh, a campaign which uh, has at least some limited success. Um, next slide, please. Um, at this point in time, uh, we have a major campaign, again, bringing the diaspora together, uh, unite, uh, you, you, unite with Ukraine. Um, we have a $25 million, at this point, $25 million uh, fund, which is supporting medical supplies, uh, protective equipment, fuel, uh, night vision goggles, protective equipment, and, and communication, because Ukraine is at war, and uh, we cannot stand idle because it is a war of values, it's a war for, de for democracy. Um, we have, uh, next slide, please. Um, as a diaspora, we have called to action, and many of our uh, member countries have taken part in um, advocating in Europe, advocating in the US, advocating in Australia. Um, we call to action and our communities come together. And uh, next slide, please. Um, in our in normal support for Ukraine, apart from this war effort, um, we have members uh, memorandums of understanding with the Ukrainian cabinet of ministers and Ukraine Invest. In other words, we work in partnership, um, the diaspora with Ukraine in developing Ukraine. Uh, we did election monitoring missions 
um, throughout uh, throughout throughout the years. Um, we have um, a campaign in obtaining multiple citizenship legis legislation. Um, we've developed programs in terms of economic development. Um, we're working towards Euro -inter Atlantic integration, and we foster Ukrainian. Um, you, you, the Ukrainian national identity um, or responsibilities of the uh, UWC. Next slide, please. We have very strong, partner, powerful partnerships, which we have created uh, internationally. Um, and again, that goes back into um, being a diaspora. And I'm somebody who mentioned before that um, uh, first it's first generation, but we do have a number of people, second and third generation Ukrainians, who have returned back to Ukraine over the last 20 years and play active roles uh, in different positions. For example, uh, up until recently, the acting minister for health was Oriana Suprun, uh, an American who took on Ukrainian citizenship. Um, next, next slide, please. Um, we uh, have uh, our campaign is uh, strengthening our communities from the cradle to the grave. In other words, the diaspora works very, very hard in maintaining identity, not to assimilate, but to integrate, um, be strong communities, but be strong and active communities in the countries of their, um, of their being. Next slide, please. We have a very strong collaboration with churches. The churches in our uh, in Ukrainian, Ukrainian culture play a very, very important role. Um, we participated in the strengthening of the Orthodox Church and the Tomos, which was granted. Um, we were working towards the patriarchal uh, status for the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. Um, we work with the churches uh, on community building and collaboration through such organizations as Caritas. And uh, next slide, please. We also, as a diaspora, see the importance of uh, the memory of truthful history. Therefore, we have uh, a committee uh, and been working very hard about the Holodomor, the genocide against the Ukrainian nation, 32-33, the famine, about getting global recognition. Um, we have formed a Holodomor descendants network. Again, going back to what somebody mentioned before, um, it's no longer those descendants. Many of those descendants have passed, but we want their children and their grandchildren and great-grandchildren um, to understand the impact of the Holodomor. Um, we're also working towards the Babanyar uh, the memorialization. Stefan, one minute left. The uh, revolution of dignity and the recognition of uh, the 1944-51 deportation. Uh, last slide. Uh, our future vision, we're on to international advocacy. We're very close in collaboration with Ukraine at this point in time. We have a very strong youth program. And for us, community development is very, very important. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Stefan. We have heard from three very important diaspora organizations and leaders what are their key challenges and best practices. We recognize that diaspora organizations are instrumental to achieve the sustainable development goals of the Global Compact for Migration. Some of the key insights and recommendations or best practices from the three uh, diaspora uh, presenters, we can take that um, in, there's need for international advocacy, uh, youth programs, community development, um, use of technology for a better diaspora engagement, quantifying diaspora, diaspora organization efforts, and more opportunities to contribute to policy development and consultations. As a diaspora and myself, with over 25 years in Ireland, I am very excited about the next chapter of diaspora engagement and the collaborations and partnerships that will stem from this summit and the collaborations in, uh, with our countries of origin and adopted countries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura. What a riveting session, and who better than the diaspora organizations to let us know about the best practices.